Welcome everyone to another video of SWAE3411 Environmental Soil Microbiology. My name is Daniel Blackburn and this is the second week of emergency remote teaching in the midst of the COVID-19 crisis. So today's class is about soil bacteria. First of all here you can see some images of uh, how they look like on the plates uh, when we grow in the lab. You've already seen this when you have your um, lab practicals. But also some microscopy and how diverse bacteria, bacteria look like um, under the microscope. It's very hard to observe this difference in the uh, normal light microscope because the bacteria are usually very small organisms. But under um, electron microscopy then you can see much better uh, their shapes and uh, uh, different features that these microbes have. Um, in terms of size, as we were saying, bacteria are very, very small and uh, much more than fungi and eukaryons. And they, uh, b because of that reason, they can occupy the micropores in the soil. Here is a, a, a microscopy, microscopy of a, a quartz particle, the big quartz particle, and you have some clays here and some silt. Uh, this quartz is on the silt side, silt size by the way, it's not the sand, but the silt size. And you have some clays, and then here, very small, you have a rod of a, probably a bacillus, or a, a bacterium uh, occupying this uh, micropore here on the soil. So you can imagine that because they're so small, they can, uh, occupy all sorts of microenvironments in the soil and therefore have uh, uh, a more uh, complete coverage of uh, different functions and behaviors uh, with different microenvironments in the soil which carry different oxygen levels, uh, different pHs and uh, also different moisture content uh, and so the bacteria can explore all these sorts of diverse environments. Uh, bacteria is one of the three branches of the tree of life. Um, so the three branches are archaea, bacteria, and eukaryota. Eukaryota comprises all uh, higher animals, plants, fungi, um, and uh, uh, protists, for, for example, and etc. Arthropods, insects, and uh, all the, the higher animals it's, and um, plants. Archaea, they were believed uh, before the 1970s that they were bacteria, but uh, after close investigation of their uh, genetic material, uh, it was seen that these archaea, they were in some features more like uh, eukaryotes than uh, like bacteria. Uh, and bacteria were somewhat, uh, somewhat uh, more primitive in, uh, uh, than archaea in some subsense. Some of the bacteria could be uh, more primitive than archaea. Um, so, so bacteria we have about 10 to the 8 and uh, to 10 to the 10th uh, uh, bacteria per gram of soil. Uh, we have, uh, just to be to put things in perspective, we have 10 to 19 grains of sand in the world, 10 to the 23rd stars uh, on the observable universe. Uh, we have 10 to the 27th bacteria just in uh, tropical rainforest soils and 10 to the 30th bacteria on Earth. So it's quite a lot uh, bacteria if you count by number of cells. The, but the biomass is also very high. Usually the biomass of bacteria is the biggest in uh, amongst all microbes in soil and uh, amongst all living beings in soil. But in, in some certain conditions, the biomass of fungi can be uh, a bit higher. Um, uh, we have human cells in the body, about 10, uh, 10 to the 13th cells in the human body. And uh, we can have up to 10 to the 14th, 10 times more uh, bacterial cells in, on and in the human body if you count all the microbes that are in our skin and in our digestive tract. Um, well, bacteria has uh, also uh, one single cell bacteria of slow growth can, uh, can persist 
very long, either frozen or inside rocks, for example, and can still be functioning and be alive. Um, we have one case of one 8 million old bacteria revived from the Antarctic ice. Um, the other thing that we uh, uh, have to thank bacteria for is that bacteria, they are uh, somewhat regarded as the, the, the base from the biotech industry. So, for example, TAC polymerase that is used for PCR amplification of DNA, which is one of the most basic uh, molecular biology methods, it, it comes from uh, a bacteria uh, isolated from a thermal uh, um, uh, uh, hydrothermal um, environment in, uh, uh, in uh, Yosemite, and this bacteria is Thermos aquaticus, and the, 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 the TAC polymerase is the enzyme that duplicates the DNA on these conditions. Because they are so tolerant to high temperature, then we can use it in vitro uh, for the replication, for the in vitro amplification of DNA. Um, uh, bacterias, uh, bacteria viruses, uh, the, also called phages, they are uh, um, highly, they were the basis to understand how the, the, the the molecular machinery works on the replication uh, or in duplication of DNA and uh, due to uh, how they interfere on these cells. Also some, some uh, microbial enzymes from bacteria uh, called restriction enzymes are very useful in molecular biology because we can then chop uh, and cut some DNA sequences uh, on precise locations. Uh, and uh, the plasmids, which are a circular, uh, small circular uh, uh, DNA from bacteria, they are transferable. Some bacteria share these plasmids with each other, so we can use these plasmids as a way of infecting uh, other bacteria with the genes that we, keep, we want. We first insert these genes on the plasmid, and then we can infect other bacteria and have them produce the, the the proteins they are coded in the genes that we inserted. Um, so, uh, so bacteria can be genetically modified, and all this is a, 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 the basis for uh, the production of any protein uh, or metabolite that we want to produce as a result from these genes that we insert in the bacteria. So, the, bi the biotech industry is highly based on bacteria. Although uh, many uh, production organisms now are fungi or yeasts, but bacteria was the, 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 the who kickstart all this. The understanding of the molecular biology of bacteria is how we kickstarted all this biotech industry. Um, so bacteria are unicellular organisms. Um, they are prokaryotes and they're very simple and very small. So some bacteria could be below one micrometer, although we, you would say that it's between two and five micrometers, uh, the usual length of a bacteria that you see on soil. Uh, uh, most bacteria are a little bit larger than the clay particles, which is two microns, um, tops. Uh, the, the number of bacteria exceeds all soil organisms, and usually the biomass also exceeds the, 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 the biomass of other organisms, but it could be, uh, in some situations, uh, not true. But the number of bacteria in soils will exceed the, num the number of uh, other organisms in soils. So the morphology of bacteria, it's, uh, it's, uh, it does not tell us much about which species, uh, the, taxonomic, uh, the taxonomy of these uh, uh, organisms in soil, but there's some things that comes, comes out very obvious. Uh, we have COSI, COSI uh, which has these spheric forms. Uh, we have filamentos, uh, uh, like, you know, like the actinomycet bacteria in soil, and we have uh, bacilli rods, uh, which are very typical uh, observations from soil microbes, and spirilla, which has these uh, um, spiral forms. These are uh, usual, usually observed in photosynthetic uh, bacteria in water environments. Um, 
and other other uh, more diverse way of uh, showing this type of forms that we can find from bacteria. We have uh, coccus forms, Diplococcus tetrads, uh, Streptococcus, uh, Staphylococcus, uh, and and so on. We can have them bind by chains uh, and. Um, uh, here is uh, the, the spirilla, and um, yeah, just to be, be a, a little bit uh, wider on the types of shapes that you can uh, observe uh, of bacteria in soils. Um, so bacteria, uh, they are prokaryons, so the, the prokaryon cell does not have a nucleus, and does not have organelles, uh, it's just a cytoplasm uh, and the membrane, and um, and uh, the cytoplasm contain the genetic, genetic material, which is usually a circular uh, um, uh, genomic DNA, and this is very um, uh, interwoven in itself. And uh, uh, this this um, this genetic material, uh, it's uh, besides this uh, uh, genomic uh, uh, DNA, we have also plasmids inside. Uh, the, uh, we have also uh, loads of ribosomes for um, uh, making the proteins, and we could have in the cell some pili, uh, which is uh, just these hairs that grow around the bacteria, which has, helps in the the, 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 the movement. And uh, some bacteria will carry also flagella, which helps uh, them swimming in more aqueous environments. So pili is like uh, useful for for the gliding uh, movement, and the flagella uh, are useful for uh, swimming uh, motility in uh, aqueous environments. So the gliding movement consists that the bacteria is pushing and dragging itself uh, through a solid surface. So this is quite common. Uh, in soil bacteria, and uh, especially in the ones, uh, the group of bacteria called uh, uh, mixobacteria. There is a link here for a YouTube video that you can watch on, about this, this uh, movement. And um, here on the, um, on the right, you can see that the flagellum, which is a very complex uh, uh, molecular uh, 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 group of proteins that are charged for moving this flagellum. Um, and uh, some of the uh, arguments of, of uh, irreducible complexity are based on how this uh, very complex machinery with more than 40 proteins could be happening uh, without uh, uh, some engineering, but of course this is, uh, has been a little bit debunked uh, because some of these proteins are found in other uh, sorts of uh, 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 organisms that, that does not have uh, flagellum, but also you can have here a link that you can watch some of these uh, flagellum-based movements on the bottom. So please follow those links. Um, I will also uh, add uh, in the Moodle a link from uh, Journey to the Microcosms, so uh, in which shows a little bit of. Uh, 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 movement of microbes, but that, that video is mostly based on water microbes, but it's also very useful for, for you to have a look on how this uh, movement and, and how this, the bacteria and other microbes can propel themselves in either solid or, or a liquid medium. Um, All right, so uh, bacteria can uh, make also this uh, how uh, these uh, uh, resistance structures called endospores. So the endospores um, they, uh, they they help this bacteria uh, with the long term survival and may uh, and be, uh, become in this dormant state. So bacteria that are able to make endospores like Bacillus and Actinomyces. They, um, they are able to withstand, for example, high temperature and drought by becoming uh, dormant. So they can um, encapsulate themselves and uh, start uh, reproducing again when the conditions are right on the environment. Uh, so we have uh, two main groups of bacteria. Uh, this is the 
very broad classification of bacteria based on the cell wall material. So, and this this classification is uh, is what you did on the the gram staining on the lab. So you did this practical, and you remember uh, looking at the the. the the, the two types of bacteria that you could stain on the lab. So you have gram positive and gram negative. So this, this gram staining uh, um, uh, consists in adding this uh, 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 crystal violets to the, to the membrane and staining the membrane. And then you can destain the gram negative uh, because the peptidoglycan layer is much uh, thinner. Uh, and whereas you cannot distain so well the gram-positive st uh, 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 strains. So the counter stain will be uh, visible in the gram-negative and the initial stain will be uh, visible in the gram-positive. So it becomes that the, the gram-positive will be uh, showing the violet uh, color from the, the crystal violet and the gram negative will be showing the counter stain of saffronin, which is more pinkish uh, uh, color. So, but the differences are reflecting actually the properties of the cell wall material. So it's the, the thickness of this peptidoglycan layer, which is much uh, thicker on the gram positive. And the, the, uh, in the, the, the gram negative will have a double uh, uh, the two, two outer membranes, which have a plasma, a plasma membrane and an outer membrane. Uh, uh, and this space in between these two membranes are called the, the peri periplasma or periplasmatic uh, 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 region. Uh, in gram-negative uh, bacteria, many enzymes are uh, periplasmatic enzymes. They will be occurring and inhabiting this environment. And many of the biochemical functions of the gram-negative bacteria will be uh, happening in this periplasmatic uh, environment. So the functions of bacteria, you will, you will have that, uh, uh, the, the decomposers, like the fungi, they will be um, uh, decomposing organic matter in the soil, they will be heterotrophs. Um, chemoorganotrophs, and they will uh, produce enzymes that will be, uh, break uh, organic material into smaller um, uh, uh, molecules, which they can reuse either for energy or as a source of carbon. Um, so this is very important for the nutrient cycling in soils, the decomposers, the chemoorganoheterotrophs. They uh, have a role similar to what the fungi is having on soil, uh, and they're complementing the work of fungi. Uh, nevertheless, it's, some fungi will have more uh, uh, extracellular enzymes that will be able to degrade a more recalcitrant uh, carbon-based molecules than the bacteria. So the, the bacteria will actually uh, be, will be targeting... Uh, compounds that are a little bit more simpler to degrade and more easier to degrade than the ones that the fungi will be uh, decomposing. Uh, we have many mutualists uh, on bacteria, and they will be uh, they have a lot of uh, symbiotic relationships with, including plants, um, and with other bacteria and with fungi and many uh, macrofauna and mesofauna. So th this is one of the reasons that we cannot isolate. A huge amount of uh, bacteria because the, um, a good part of them they are mutualists. They cannot uh, live by themselves. Uh, they are symbiotic uh, obligates. Uh, and like for example, rhizobium. Uh, uh, rhizobium will be infecting the roots of legumes, forming nodules and fixing nitrogen uh, that will be useful for the plants and for the other soil microbes. But these uh, mutualistic relationships are very common and very uh, widespread among uh, bacteria. Of course, some of the bacteria will not be good for plants or good for the soils. They will be pathogens and they have an ecological role on the environment. But uh, when we uh, look from the agronomy perspective, these pathogens, they are very... Um, uh, harmful and we kind of want to control them and do not 
have them uh, spread on, on soils. So there are many soil borne pathogens that will be um, very bad for crops. Um, uh, the fourth group that uh, we, we want to highlight here are the chemoautotrophs. So the chemoautotroph, uh, uh, autotrophic bacteria, they're uh, very important and they are usually keystone species on soils. Uh, for example, uh, some of the nitrogen uh, oxidizing bacteria and the, and the sulfur oxidizing bacteria, they're chemoautotrophs. Uh, which means they're using the, the energy uh, from the uh, inorganic compounds, uh, either sulfur or, or uh, ammonium, for example, and they are uh, fixing CO2 from the atmosphere. Uh, they are fixing CO2 from the atmosphere. So this type of bacteria, the chemoautrotrophs, they're um, uh, very important on the soils. Yeah? Very important. So, uh, as we spoke before, uh, in the, in the, just to make a, a reminder uh, from the energy sources and carbon sources, the, the usual classification of uh, any organism will be that if they have uh, uh, the energy source is sunlight, then they are uh, 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 phototrophs. If the energy source is a chemical compound, they are chemotrophs. If they, they can be chemoautotrophs or uh, uh, chemoheterotrophs, if the source is organic material, and they, keep, they can be photoheterotrophs or photoautotrophs depending on the carbon source. Yeah. Um, so the chemoautotrophs, they, they are uh, oxidizing uh, some chemical compounds in soil, for example, the nitrification, but also sulfur oxidizing bacteria like Theobacillus. Uh, is, uh, the, the, the nitrifying microbes like Nitrosomonas and Nitrobacter, they will be uh, oxidizing ammonium into, into nitrate and nitrate. And the sulfur oxidizing bacteria like Theobacillus or acid Theobacillus, they will be oxidizing elemental sulfur or sulfides into um, sulfate. And by doing that, this oxidation procedure, it, they can uh, use it as a source of energy. And many of these microbes, they are autotrophs, which means they will be fixing CO2 from the atmosphere. Uh, like plants and like cyanobacteria, which are also photosynthetic. So uh, the uh, the chemoautotrophs uh, they are very famous because the, the the father of soil microbiology, soil microbiology, Sergey Winogradsky. Uh, Winogradsky he he made this uh, ecosystems uh, in the lab. Uh, by creating gradients uh, in columns, gradients of oxygen um, uh, from anoxic conditions to oxy conditions, where different microbes could be uh, producing uh, reduced forms of sulfur and oxidizing this reduced uh, source of, of, uh, of sulfur back into uh, sulfate. And uh, by adding other uh, uh, Complex, uh, chemicals to the to this environment like iron, uh, organic sources, um, uh, carbonates. Uh, uh, he can then, in a source of light, he could have a very uh, huge variety of organisms in these bottles, which is called the uh, Winogradsky columns. So you can have a very reducing environment on the bottom and a very oxidizing environment on the top. And with the source of sulfur, these reducing enviro environments will produce a lot of uh, sulfides. And some bacteria will not be able to survive these sulfides. And as it goes up, the, the oxy conditions will become, uh, 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 will oxidize the sulfides and will be decontaminate this environment. And other bacteria will be able to uh, appear. And also iron oxidizing bacteria will appear in this environment when the uh, oxy conditions become more relevant. Then you can see the red, uh, red um, uh, 
colors happening. In the more reducing part, you will have the iron reduction and you have the carbonates acting for as a as acceptor for electrons in anaerobic re uh, respiration. Uh, and you get all, all these microenvironments like uh, sulfate reducing bacteria, uh, green sulfur bacteria, purple sulfur bacteria. I will make a new video on uh, uh, giving you a better description of the Winogradsky columns and uh, how different conditions can produce different types of communities on these bottles. I made my own Winogradsky columns and uh, I will bring them, uh, make a video and uh, I will show them to you later on. Um, anyway, uh, another important group of bacteria are the photoautotrophic bacteria, which means they are uh, photosynthetic. They are fixing CO2 from uh, the atmosphere, but the source of energy now is not a chemical compound. The source of energy is light. Uh, these bacteria, they were uh, previously known as uh, blue-green algae. But now uh, they're uh, usually only called as uh, cyanobacteria. Uh, they're very old. We have uh, fossils from cyanobacteria as old as 3.5 billion years old. And um, one of the important things of these cyanobacteria uh, is that they can also fix and utilize atmospheric nitrogen. And these are the only organisms on Earth that can fix both carbon and nitrogen from the atmosphere. So they are ecologically very important in soils. Uh, but nevertheless, they are only present on the surface of soils because this, they need the, the sunlight to, uh, as a source of energy. So the, uh, usually you will see them associated with fungi as lichens and biomats. Well, they're very, very beautiful microbes and they have a very special role in nitrogen fixation in soils. So this is a, a meme time, a time that uh, uh, you have this, uh, everybody thinking about photosynthetic organisms just uh, from the plant side and everybody uh, ignoring the role of cyanobacteria as carbon and nitrogen fixers in this uh, environment. Um, so the, the majority of the bacteria in soil, they are heterotrophs, yeah? They are chemo-organo-heterotrophs. I, I would say usually over 90% of the biomass in the soil from bacteria, they are heterotrophs. And that is why the, the, the plate counts that you can make uh, by uh, using general media for isolating these heterotrophs, they are uh, precise enough that you can um, that you can uh, represent the soil, the biomass of soil bacteria, because the majority of the biomass uh, they are from these heterotrophs. In the other groups, they are uh, the, the chemoautotrophs, uh, and they are they are. Uh, um, occurring in lower uh, uh, relative amount. Uh, they, they, they work on organic matter and they use the organic matter as a source of carbon and also as a source of energy. Uh, most of the, the, the composition of organic matter in soil comes from these uh, microbes. Um, so you have the, the heterotrophic nitrogen fixation, which is uh, uh, symbiotic, uh, usually symbiotic, but you also have free-living uh, uh, non-symbiotic nitrogen fixers. But the majority of the biomass of, the, 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 of these uh, nitrogen fixers are from the group of the rhizobium, making association with uh, legume plants, forming these nodules on the roots. And using the, the, the sugars fixed by the, the, the plants as a source of carbon and uh, uh, fixing the, the atmospheric nitrogen and sharing that with the plants. So it, 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 the, the plants spend energy feeding uh, these microbes, but they get in return a, a very scarce nutrient in, in some uh, soils. Uh, you also have non-symbiotic free-living uh, heterotrophic bacteria uh, 
And this, this um, for example, Azobacter or is one of the most famous. And uh, also, we you have uh, some autotrophic bacteria like Nitrospirilla also that will be fixing um, nitrogen from the atmosphere. So, uh, it, as you can see, bacteria, uh, unlike the fungi, they have a high metabolic diversity. So you can have many, uh, many other functions in soil associated with bacteria uh, and uh, that you cannot have with the fungi. And different environments and different, different chemical reactions are dependent on the presence of these groups of bacteria to happen in soil. Uh, when we can isolate the majority and, and re, uh, represent the majority of the biomass of bacteria. <clears throat> Nevertheless, we cannot isolate the majority of the taxa of bacteria, of the bacteria species, because many of these bacteria, they need very specific medium conditions to be isolated. And also, the, the majority of these bacteria, not a majority, but a good number of these bacteria, also have mutualistic relationships that cannot be reproduced on the, uh, on the lab. Um, so, this is, this, all this together makes that uh, 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 culturing these bacteria is, is a difficult uh, uh, in, in the lab environment. Um, <clears throat> All right, so this bacteria, they, they are uh, single cell microbes, but they, uh, they can communicate with each other through chemicals. And also they can communicate with, uh, with roots and other organisms. One of the most famous chemical uh, crosstalk that we uh, can have in soils is that the, the bacteria can... Uh, uh, show other bacteria on the environment their number also they, they can sense how big is the population of bacteria in the soil how does it work they produce one or more uh, chemical compounds and they secrete these chemical compounds in the environment so the higher the concentration of these chemical compounds then this uh, bacteria understands that the, the population of microbes is high this is how they can halt their growth and also maintain their population when they sense that there are too many cells already on the environment. Um, but this is not restriction, uh, restricted to quorum sensing. Quorum sensing is what I just described, is when the bacteria can sense how many uh, other cells there are in the vir environment. It's uh, assumed that each uh, species will have... Uh, one general quorum sensing molecule and one specific quorum sensing molecule, which can then they uh, detect how big is their colony and how many other organisms there are in the environment at the same time. Um, but this is not all the bacteria can do. They have other uh, forms of communications and understanding about uh, how much nutrients and uh, how much uh, how limited is the, the environment for their growth. And, um, and they can uh, use this uh, sensing of other organisms to also um, uh, make some other, change their ecological relationship towards other organisms and therefore uh, uh, compete with them in this environment. Um, so you will have some uh, a lot of different uh, uh, group behaviors that could be changing depending on the conditions of the environment because of this communication uh, between bacteria cells. And you have, for example, symbiosis, virulence, uh, com uh, competence, uh, conjugation, antibiotic production, motility, uh, sporulation, and biofilm formation could be very dependent on this uh, crosstalk between these bacteria. So uh, actinomycetes, it's another group of bacteria, and uh, uh, they are worth mentioning in, so in soils, especially in these uh, in our soils in Oman, like uh, uh, very arid uh, soils, because actinomycetes they are like bacillus; they are able to make these endospores, and these endospores are uh, very useful. Um, 
they are very useful uh, resistant structures for uh, withstanding this high heat and a drought in uh, arid soils. These are uh, this uh, bacteria. They they can make uh, these filaments, which looks like hyphae, uh, so but they are not fungi. Although they, they show these hyphae-like structures, uh, these are not fungi. They are uh, uh, single-celled uh, organisms, prokaryotes. Uh, the the hyphae, these filaments from the the, the the actinomycetes, they are usually much thinner than the ones from fungi. Um, it's very commonly found in compost and sediments, the actinomycetes, and they are uh, usually responsible for, responsible for that uh, smell of earth that we have after uh, you have rains. The, uh, the, the, the actinomycetes endospores are dispersed in the air and you can, uh, that smell is actually you're smelling the, 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 the spores from the actinomycetes. Um, they are adaptable to drought, as I told before, and they, they can survive at higher pH than most uh, bacteria. Also, they are very important heterotrophs, uh, uh, responsible for uh, organic matter cycling and uh, production of antibiotics in these environments, like, for example, streptomycin. Um, also, another group of bacteria that are very famous for producing antibiotics in soil are the groups of mixobacteria. Mixobacteria, they are not so widespread in dry environments like in Oman, but they are uh, more common from uh, uh, forest environments and more humid environments. Uh, they are very famous for different reasons. They have a, uh, among the bacteria, they have a very large genome. So they can do a lot more. Uh, they're very complex uh, prokaryotes. Uh, they, they can produce uh, these fruiting bodies like you would find in fungi and eukaryotes, but they are not eukaryotes, they are prokaryotes. Uh, very beautiful flowering, uh, uh, not flowers per se, but fruiting bodies uh, which change color in the plates. You can have plates that become very orange all at once because of this production of the, the fruiting bodies uh, from these organisms. Um, and they also they, they, they form spores and they can uh, uh, um, disseminate themselves in the environment very easily. They produce a lot of antibiotics also and many antibiotics are uh, uh, isolated from this type of microbes in soils. So they're very, very uh, uh, special, let's say, uh, groups of, of microbes of, uh, with uh, very special ecological relationships and very hard to isolate. They're very slow growing uh, uh, microbes. Usually they have gliding uh, also uh, motility. Uh, in the plates also you can observe these galleries formed by this gliding movement uh, from this bacteria. Last but not least, uh, we have, uh, this is not a taxa but per se, but is a group of, uh, we can group this bacteria by, uh, due to the function they have towards plants. We have some bacteria in soil that uh, inhabit the rhizosphere and they are helping plants in different ways. Uh, one, uh, some of the ways they, they can help the plants are nitrogen fixation, phosphorus solubilization, regulation of hydro hormones, uh, cereal for production and preventing the occurrence of pathogens. These bacteria can be inoculated and bio-augmented on soils and this, uh, you can help plants have a better growth if you can promote the, the proliferation of these bacteria in the rhizosphere either by inoculation or um, by creating the right conditions uh, for this bacteria to occur. So this is all I have for you in uh, soil bacteria and uh, I'm, I will be responding questions about bacteria next Sunday. Okay, thank you very much.